Good afternoon. Today in part five of lesson planning, we're going to be talking about uh, evaluation criteria. Um, evaluation criteria is something that most of us have heard of. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times I've just not been using the same vocabulary. So when you're thinking about your lessons and you have come up with what your objectives are, we know that the next thing we need to do is that we need to be thinking about what kind of evidence we need in order to show uh, mastery. So how are students going to show that they have learned um, the, the objective of your lesson? So you're going to have informal and formal uh, assessments, but what does it look like to decide that they've uh, passed or what if to reach mastery? And we call these specific elements criteria. So um, what you can do is that you can think, for example, about um, a performance list. That's one way to do it. A performance list is what do you want to see? Well, uh, here's an example of a performance list. Um, this is one a performance list on graphic display of data. The graph contains a title that tells the data. And so they've got all these key criteria listed here, the points that would be possible. Uh, oftentimes, people have um, the students uh, evaluate themselves first and then maybe another student evaluate, and then the teacher comes through and evaluates. Here's another, here's an example of one being used. So this is one that you could just use for anything. You would add in the traits of whatever uh, skill you were working on, and then you would add in the points. Then again, allow for some self-scoring uh, or, and then the teacher scoring. And here's one also that doesn't use points but uses, um, you know, smiley faces. Um, and it also kind of delineates the performance, not just did he do it or didn't he, but is it terrific, okay, needs work. So I have an interesting setting uh, and the characters must story. This is one of the criteria for writing fiction. It's terrific, it's okay, or needs work. So that's a fun way of, of doing it. So we have a couple of different kinds of rubrics that you can also use. In a holistic rubric, um, that's where you have a single scale. All the criteria is included together, and it's and included together. So the rater um, assigns a single score, usually for like one to four or one to six, based on an overall judgment of the student's work. And they so they look like this. And then you have an analytic rubric, and you can see the difference between these pretty quickly. Um, it resembles a grid, and it has the criteria for the student product listed, and then it's got levels of performance listed, and generally there's descriptions for the levels of performance. So let's take a look at one of those. So we have the objectives, and then we have the levels of performance, and then a description of the level of performance. So let's look at some other examples, maybe get you inspired. Here's a 10-point scoring rubric um, someone used in their online discussion forums. This would be an analytic rubric. Exceeds the standards, meets it, approaches it, does not meet. This kind of shows how... Um, they, they're calling this the criteria, like, like we are. This is the task, history research paper. The level of performance, excellent, good, and poor. And then the score associated with that level. These would be the descriptors. Uh, here's one. A lot of these are, are ones that students have made. And... Um, 
and they've given me permission to share. So this one we looked at, well, more one maybe not quite the same, but here's um, uh, the objective, the student will, and then what would be considered mastery, um, not satisfactory, and then satisfactory. A little bit different, much more um, sparse, but would get the job done. Here's a very complicated one. So here we've got um, each question that was asked on the assessment, um, the SSE that was addressed. So you don't know about the SSE yet, and you don't need to really um, this semester. But when you start taking your um, math, elementary math, uh, you all be talking about conceptual understanding, procedural fluency. And for those of you who are, are maybe uh, going to teach other content areas, there's evaluation, there, excuse me, subject specific emphasis for those. But we won't worry about those here today. Then the objective that this question is aligned with. And then how do we decide if it's proficient, nearing proficient, or below proficient. I really like the way this one's been arranged. The student work really hard on this. Um, this one, they've got an objective. I love this. It's really great. And um, so taking the objective, and then this is all of the criteria. They call it the breakdown of the objective, which, you know, but what this is is performance criteria or, you know, evaluative criteria the possible points for each of those, and then they would use it for points received in the total score. And then up here, it's giving them a way, they must be a, a high school teacher, they probably are one of my high school folks, um, mastery, approaching, well below. So that's pretty interesting. Character, setting, major events, this is an ELA one. Below expectations, above expectations. So it's just what they've done is they thought about. <clears throat> generally speaking, what a person does is that they they think, okay, what would be what's the minimum that I would accept um, as far as the work is concerned? I mean, what do I really want them to do? I want them to be able to list all the characters and be able to tell which ones are the main characters, and uh, I want them to be able to know at least one of the settings. Um, and they need to be able to determine what the major events were. Well, you're going to have a lot of students who, who can do this, and but there's going to be some who can't. And so it becomes a little bit easier to figure out what this looks like. But then you start thinking about what else might they do that would be above expectations? What is something that you might expect uh, a student to do that was a little more accomplished? Uh, again, this is an objective. They put the um, non-satisfactory, satisfactory, mastery. And this is just for one objective. So it doesn't have to be like this complicated grid with all those, you know, lots of objectives. It can be just this. So evaluation criteria is really important to think about because it adds, it adds to your uh, description of the assessment. So you can see here that this student, um, in explaining her informal assessments, she says that she is going to be doing some, you know, questioning, and she describes that in good detail, all about the questioning, and she talks about how she's going to observe uh, while she's questioning. But then she adds this right here, and no, it's not a rubric, and no, it's not a checklist, but it's clearly the evaluation criteria. The teacher will be looking for important information to be underlined and question marks for places in the text where the student may not understand what is written. Very nice. So we have a sense that this uh, pre-service teacher that has written this has an idea of what she's going to do, what she's going to be looking for to decide how the students are doing. And then with formal assessment, she has become even a little bit more um, clear. I will document student learning. So that's what 
a formal assessment's all about is documentation. That doesn't mean, you know, that it's a big, big, big doozy deal, but it's, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I will document student learning and mastery of this task by having a checklist. Did they underline important information? Did they use question marks? Did the students mark their text with C's to show where they made a connection? So all of this, you see how well it adds to the uh, assessment section. And what I'd for like for you to do uh, this week is uh, for bonus is to open up your um, assignment from last module and and now improve your description of your informal assessments and your formal assessments. If you're one of the people that are watching this video in order to help them with the EdTPA, then you can kind of go back and look at some of these um, here and, and get some ideas about these modules. But um, when our students know what, what not only um, what objectives are expected of them, but when they understand more clearly how to reach those targets. It's like a little roadmap for them. So we want to help our students and, and hopefully um, uh, we'll be able to uh, get some really great lesson plans and some really good uh, assessment descriptions going soon. I